Hi, my name is Harlan Krumholtz. I'm a professor of medicine at Yale University. And I'm here today to talk to you about an article that was recently released by the New England Journal of Medicine that's relevant to this COVID pandemic. There's a lot of talk these days about indirect transmission. What's indirect transmission? Well, well, let me say direct transmission is someone's infectious, they get in close contact with someone else and they spread the virus. Indirect transmission is when we're not really sure where it came from. It's, it's community transmission. And we're trying recently to figure this out. The thought is that many people are asymptomatic. People are maybe shedding virus who don't show any signs or symptoms. There's a lot of evidence of that these days. But another thing that's been raised is, to what degree can the virus be spread by surfaces? What if you touch something? I mean, we're talking a lot about people washing their hands, wiping off surfaces, being careful. And so there's a lot of interest these days in trying to figure out, does this virus survive on surfaces? Should we be worried about that? And how long does it survive on surfaces? Well, just a few days ago, a preprint arrived at MedArchive. MedArchive is a preprint server. It's where people put science before it's been peer reviewed. And it's a place where people can talk about science before it's been thoroughly vetted. And this article, this particular study, was from very credible sources, including from the NIH. This has now been published by the New England Journal of Medicine, only days later, showing you how fast peer review has become. So let's take a look at this article. And the idea was to see whether or not they could determine whether virus deposited on services could then be collected and grown in culture and shown to be able to spread that way. So what they did was they took 50 microliters of virus and deposited it on various surfaces and then tried to recover it at predetermined time points by adding just another little drop of a, of a broth where it could grow. And then they assessed its stability in various different media, like for example, on cardboard or polypropylene or on copper or on steel. And they ran a bunch of experiments where they sought to see whether they could grow it in these special kind of green monkey cells. That's what they do to try to determine whether or not virus is viable. And what they did was they found that the viable virus could be detected in aerosols up to three hours after aerosolization, up to four hours on copper, up to 24 hours on cardboard, and up to two or three days on plastic and stainless steel. Let me say that again, two or three days. So they are putting some virus on these very surfaces and then they're determining that they can collect that virus and grow it in these periods of time. The results they say indicate that aerosol and fomite transmission of this virus is plausible and they reinforce the idea that it can remain viable on these surfaces and that should inform us as we think about the transmissibility. Uh, importantly, they compared it to SARS-CoV-1 and they saw that it exhibited similar half-lives in aerosols with a medium, as we said, around three hours, 2.7 hours, and long viability on steel and polypropylene compared with cardboard and copper. But I think the important message of this piece is that the kind of guidance that we're getting about washing hands, wiping surfaces, uh, is likely to be very good advice. And the notion that this can be spread indirectly, that someone who might've been in the gym or someone who might've been wherever you are, who was shedding virus before, can transmit it to you even if they're not around. And even if they didn't even know that they were shedding virus. This is gonna put particular challenges on us, but it reinforces the, the public health messages that are coming out. So this important piece, first showing up as a preprint just a few days ago, now coming out in New England Journal of Medicine, provides us important information about how we should be informing our patients, how we should be conducting ourselves, and really the transmissibility of this virus, and, and in some ways the reason that it's spreading so much and so far.